So let's get started with our, our actual calculus stuff. Oh, this is going to be awesome. So with our calculus, we're going to talk about limits first. Now, our limits is really the basis to our calculus. It's how we do calculus. We're going to find out some kind of tricks to calculus later, but for right now, if you know how to do limits, you're going to be able to do calculus. So it's probably a pretty important idea, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to find that out towards the last part of this class. Uh, for right now, I want to lead you through an introduction to calculus and what it's all about. Are you ready to learn that? This review is over with, thankfully. Now we're going to slow down just a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about actual calculus stuff. So no more really hair raising, kind of, oh my gosh, so much stuff. Uh, we're going to go a little bit slower, but it's going to be more in depth. Are you ready for it? Slightly slower, not, not much slower. In calculus, we have two basic goals in Calculus 1, this, this introductory course of calculus. So here are the two goals. Goal number one. The first goal, and the one that we're going to spend most of our class on, at least the first half of our class on, is this goal. Given any curve, given any curve, not straight lines, straight lines are easy, but given a curve, I want to be able to find the slope of a curve at a point. Isn't that an interesting idea? If I say to you, I want you to go ahead and find me the slope at that point. Right now, we really have no idea how to do it. I mean, you can approximate it. You can go, oh, okay, I'll find the slope. Let's see, slope is mm, one half. Is that accurate? No idea. But, well, we can't really just kind of approximate slope. What we're going to do is find out a really good way using calculus on how to find the slope of a curve at a point. In fact, when I ask you a certain thing in this class, you're going to say, oh, it's the slope of a curve at a point. We're going to talk about that for a long time. That's goal number one. Goal number one is to find the slope of a tan or to find the tangent to a curve at a point. The tangent is the line that intersects a curve at one and only one spot in an in a area. So goal number one. Find the tangent which involves the slope of the curve at a point. That's goal one. If we can do that, we're, we're on calculus fast pass, fast pace. That's, that's, that's good. So we want to take a curve, be able to find the slope of that curve at a point that's going to lead to the tangent and, and vice versa. Tangent and slope uh, go hand in hand for, for us. Goal number two, which is the last half of our class, maybe a little less than that. Goal number two is it's also a really interesting question. So cool. By the way, this stuff is stuff you can't answer in any other class, right? You can't, you can't do that with algebra. There's no way you can do that with algebra. You can't find the slope of a curve. Are you kidding me? Slope of a straight line? Easy. Slope of a curve? Wow, it's weird. That's, is that not an intriguing idea to you? It should be. If you're in this class, you'd be like, oh, that's kind of that's cool. How are you going to find the slope of a curve? I don't know. Calculus. The next question is probably even a little bit more interesting. Next question is, let's suppose I have some funky, any curve that you, that you can think of, as long as it's defined by a function. Can you, between two points, find the area under that curve. Can you do it? The answer is right now, with what you know, can you do that with geometry? Because I could say, okay, great, uh, find the area of something that's curving. Can you, can you do that? No. No, you can't do, use the area for a rectangle, that's not a rectangle. You can't use the area for a triangle, that's not a triangle. You can't break this up in any way that you have geometric figures, can you? Not even circles, not even with radiuses, because the radius is changing. So the next question is, can you find the area under a curve? Those are the two goals of calculus. Find the slope or the tangent of a curve at a point. And secondly, can you find the area under a curve between two points? Interesting stuff, weird stuff, right? It's crazy questions going on here.
And amazingly, it's actually not that hard. Uh, this is, I think it's easier than uh, pre-calculus. It's easier than that. You don't have to do, maybe not easier, but if you know pre-calculus, this is not such reach. What we're going to talk about first, we're going to talk about the tangent problem. I'll give you a very intro to this, but I'll talk about it later on. We're going to talk about this for most of our day to day. So let's talk about the tangent problem. Are you ready? Do you have any questions on the ideas of the goals of calculus? Do you understand what the goals are? The goals are A, find the tangent or the slope of a curve at a point. That's what we want to do. Goal number two, after we finish this, we're going to move on to finding the area under a curve between two points. Very cool ideas. So, Let's work on the tangent problem right off the bat. You, you're lucky you're here today. Okay, this is it. This is like the fundamental idea of calculus. This is so cool. We're going to figure out what a limit is from doing this idea right here, too. Here's the tangent problem. The tangent problem says, if you give me any arbitrary curve, so I'm just making up, I don't even know what that, that is, it's just an arbitrary curve, and you give me a point, let's call that P. You give me a point, call it P. I want to be able to find the slope of that curve at point P. Do you get the idea? We're talking about the tangent problem right now, right? Slope of that curve at that point. Because if we have the slope and we have the point, we can make the equation of a tangent. Do you get me? That's, that's pretty easy. That's just y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So right now we have the point. What we're worried about is the slope of the curve at that point. Do you follow? Now the problem is this. Um, if we're going to make up a, a tangent line, how many points do you need to make up a line? How many points do we have? That's the problem. Right? How are you supposed to make the equation of a line when you only have one point and you don't know the slope yet. Do you see the issue? That's the problem. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, okay, well, let's, let's put some point somewhere else on this thing. How about uh, Q up there? <coughs> if I connect these two things, if I connect those two things, do you remember what, what it's called when you connect two points together? It's not a tangent, it's a, do you know? It's a secant line. If you've had some geometry, a secant connects two parts of a, well, usually a circle, but it, of any function. So we would say that PQ is a secant line. It touches two points of this curve. Now here's the question, all right? You, you agree that we need two points for, a, for a, a line, yes? But we also agree that we want the tangent of point P. That's the ultimate goal here. So my question to you is, is PQ a good approximation for the tangent? Is this a good approximation for this? Okay, it, it, it's an approximation, right? They're both positive, okay, sure. What I'm asking you is, is there a way, think about this for a second, is there a way that I can make this secant approximation better to make it more approximate the tangent? Can I make this a better approximation? How could I do it? Let's assume for a second that P is fixed, but Q is movable. You can move the point Q. I can't move P, but I can move the point Q. Can you move Q to make this secant line a better approximation to our tangent line? Can you think of that? Where would you move Q? Would you move it up? Would you move it down? Let's look what happens. Okay, this is going to be interesting. So we're going to find out what happens as we move Q down this line. So if I move Q here, is that better or worse? Better, because I'm going to have let's use different colors here. That. This would be like Q sub 1, maybe a different point for Q. Uh, if I move it closer, is it going to get better or worse? Better. Okay. If I move it closer, it's going to get even better. If I move it closer, it's going to get even better. If I move it closer, it's going to get even better. 
when do you stop? Can you move it really, really close? Can you move it so Q and P are the same point? Why not? Because then you only have one point. How many points do you need for line? We need two. So can we move it close? The answer is, sure, we're, we're doing it right now. Can you move it close? Yes. Can you move it so close that there's no difference between them? Yeah. Can you make it the same point? No. That would fail because we need two points. I don't care how close they are, but you need two different points, right? If you have two different points, you can make the equation of a line. That's great. That'd be fantastic. That's our idea, actually. So we're going to try to move the point Q really, 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 really close to the point P. If we can move it really, 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 really close, that's math speak, by the way, really, 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 that means very, 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 very. <laughs> if we can move it really, really, really close, then our secant line is going to be really, 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 really close to a tangent line. Do you agree with the idea? So you take this point, you go, let's move it really close. Not really far away, that's a sucky approximation. But if we move it really close, move that secant really close, that point really close, that secant is so close to a tangent line that it's not going to make a difference. That's the idea. So let me write some of the stuff out for you. So what we're doing right here, we need two points for a line, sure. We understand that. Awesome. So we have the points P and Q. Well, the question we're asking is, what happens as Q gets closer to P? And the answer is, as Q gets closer to P, but we just talked about this, we just said this, I'm not, this is nothing new. As Q gets closer to P, the secant line more closely approximates the tangent line. Now, have you understood that at the first Okay. So as Q approaches, I'm going to use that word, we're going to use that word limits as well, approaches, that means gets closer to. As Q approaches P, we get closer to a tangent, or in other words, the secant more closely approximates the tangent. Okay, well that's great, that's great. Oh, one, one more little note. Uh, why was it that we can't just let Q equal P? What, what was the reason? Why can't we just say, oh, let's move to P? Because there wouldn't be a difference. Okay, there, there wouldn't be two actual points at the same point twice, and that's, that's a problem. You couldn't make an equation of a line with that. So one little note, we can't just let Q equal P because we need two points to make a line. You need two points. That would be a problem. Here's the idea of a limit, all right? This is a big, big idea. Here's the big, big idea for limits, okay? The idea is how close can you get one point to another without them being the same point? So let's say I have two points like this. Can you find some space between it? Let's say I move it over to the midpoint. Can you find some space between 